How was everyone's weekend? Sorry I'm late. Hello. I just got off a pod. Hey. <laughs> Pretty interesting guy, actually. He was a consultant at McKinsey at BCG and just ended up kind of designing his own life. Very, very t- a la Tim Ferriss. Oh. Hello. Hey. Hey, hey man. Working remotely in, in uh, Taiwan. Really interesting guy. Um, but anyways... So, yeah, Joe, you want to get started? We'll just hop right into Dev and get Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was writing uh, an update here, but I'll, I'll just talk. Cool. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> on the app side, we didn't have any updates uh, in terms of uh, development in general because Alex was sick. So, uh, nothing there uh, except for uh, automated tests. Uh, they were working on a proof of concept uh, just to test like login and registration uh, mm-hmm. using a tool they suggested. Uh, looks like it worked for tests, but it, it was not good enough to integrate with the App Center, okay. which was uh, some, something we were uh, thinking about using. So um, Vitaly sent uh, an email saying that there is another tool called uh, Opium or something like that. Mm-hmm. Opium, I don't know, uh, which would take like three days uh, to do another uh, round of tests. So and I asked some questions, so if we could use something that we could. Uh, used before uh, looks like we can just use the experience of how to write the text the tests and so on I, I think it's worth uh, letting them uh, do that uh, just so we can have these two for now one uh, but I, I needed your approval first yeah is it this is for single sign on what, what's this for for automated testing you mean yeah automated testing yeah yeah that's fine let's get that working because I think we really need it <laughs> yeah exactly okay cool yeah. good um, the other thing <clears throat> is, so, uh, in terms of approval, that one I, I sent, they may have said yes. So Khalid said our backup server is, um, needs more space because the, the file, files directory we have on the site is just growing like crazy. Uh, I think as we don't have enough time to review that and see what we can delete, I just told him to go ahead and, and change that. That's, I think, $40 more a month. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Approved. Yeah, so I think <laughs> once we do, we finish the migration. I think then, yeah, we can just review the files directory and maybe uh, I don't know, cut that in half, maybe who knows. And then we can just go back and reduce the cost of the backup server. Yeah, I think I assume right now it's just because we're doing so much stuff around. Um... Maybe uh, because of resumes. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, no idea. So you're saying that it's ex- the size is exploding? Yeah, he's saying that it's just growing, growing like crazy, the, the files directory. So that's why uh, we need more space. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, then uh, besides that, last week uh, we put just like a, a small tool, just a form uh, to help IV uh, merge companies. Uh, which helps. It just facilitates the process. Um, Art Artem has been working on the WSO store, so tomorrow uh, <clears throat> he will finish uh, testing the subscriptions, uh, bundles, and all that, so we can just uh, migrate everything from product bought by user content type to the new entities, and then just get rid of that. Got it. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, hopefully we can get that done. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. looking at the this stuff here on the scorecard. Okay, let's let's keep going. Um, anything yeah. else on DevSec? Yeah, a, yeah, a few things more. Yeah. yeah. So um, we also pushed a big, really big change from uh, it's the, about CSS. So the, uh, CSS to SCSS. Uh, Andre did that. Uh, that helps us to keep things in variables. So, for example, we know uh, exactly which blue uh, we're gonna have everywhere on the site. So we don't have this like to specify uh, one color everywhere, not just for colors, but for spacing. So there's more uh, consistency uh, in terms of uh, design. That was a pretty big change. That it changed like almost 400 files uh, to do that. Yep. Uh, now, now he's working on the new designs that uh, Hana prepared. So forum container is the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you think yeah, you'll that's... push that today? No, I'm not sure. He needed to step out, so that's why he's not. He didn't join the the call. Call. Yep. I'm okay. not sure if he if he will be able to push today, but maybe tomorrow. 
Okay. okay. Because he started, I, I think, on Friday on that. So there's today and then tomorrow maybe we'll be there. Uh, with this change, he will also uh, process the, the, the SCSS and uh, generate the CSS files. So we're going to be able to see the consistency in colors on the site that we were talking about. Great. Yep. Uh, there's also uh, Alex uh, started working last week uh, on Drupal 8. Alex is the new backend developer. Mm -hmm. So for the first things he did was checking how the company database migration was looking like, uh, data migration, and he updated Drupal 8 to, to the latest version. Um, the code was also still using uh, GitHub, so he changed to GitLab. And next week, he will be available uh, full-time. So this week, he's still just part-time. Um, I did a, a planning with all the the custom modules, uh, contrib, themes, blocks, views. That's on a new board in Trello. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna share that with the guys today just to uh, to review with them uh, and see in terms of timing, if that makes sense or not, to get their opinion. Got it, okay. Very cool, very cool. Um, okay, uh, let's see, I'm going through here. In, in terms of support, anything going on, guys? Carolyn or, or Ivy that you've seen this week? I saw a few tickets come across around access to courses. Is this something new or just normal? Um, I don't know that it's necessarily new. It it does seem to need that touch that we were talking about last week of importing the user. Um, but really, there was only a couple of them. Yeah, I'm just worried that something where people are like not getting access properly. Or was it the fact that they had the wrong email during checkout or... Um, no, it was the course was not applied to the account that they were contacting us from. So it does appear to be a problem, but I don't know how widespread it really is. Because, like I said, there was like two, they, they, maybe it was the same email that they used to purchase the course. It just didn't, but for some reason, their course wasn't right. Yes, on this account. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let just keep give us an update. Like when when you see if you see, if and when you see any of those this week, where people are like, "Hey, you do this," or maybe when you see a few conversions come through in Fusionsoft, maybe just check those users on the site, sure. Carolyn or Ivy. If you guys could just do a couple spot checks to make sure that the courses are getting at, being given access to them and stuff like that, that'd be great. Okay. So uh, one uh, one thing I was I was thinking about now. Uh, so we some, sometimes we have these problems where people have more than one email. So they use, I don't know, their work email and then their personal email. And they use the personal email on the side and then they contact us using the, the work email. So uh, a while ago, we were talking about using uh, a form of authentication using the, the phone from uh, Facebook. Uh, maybe we can think about a way of uh, having, a, I don't know, a more consistent way of... Uh, authenticating on the side because maybe if the users always use their phones to authenticate sometimes some websites do that uh then people would just have one number right? i think it will be really rare that people will have more than one more than and nowadays we don't even move on our houses without our phones right <laughs> yeah so, i mean it's one way i just don't know how many people would use that as a, and i don't think it's something where we could replace like single sign-on with that yeah, know. just an idea, something that we can think about that um, may help us, uh, not necessarily uh, just to replace uh, everything uh, for authentication, mm -hmm. but yeah. maybe, uh, I don't know, like have a token uh, to access uh, the, the course. So if the, the person has a token, then we can say, okay, this token is associated with this user, then you can go in and access. I don't know, just I'm just thinking out okay. loud. Yeah, well, we can we can talk about that offline and see if there's another way to get it more consistently um, mm -hmm. to them. But um, okay, um, what else is going on? Uh, social? How did uh, the social team look? I think well, Callie's is Callie still out, right, Andy? Or is she? Yeah, I haven't heard from her. Yeah, heard from her. Okay. Um, in terms of you know, last week was a holiday week here in the U.S., so um, a little bit slower, but uh, Rio was putting out a lot of great stuff on Instagram and engagement and impressions were super high. So that was good to see. Um, besides that, it'll be interesting this week. Um, Carolyn has been scheduling stuff to help that team um, with like the job stuff, the 
um, the men the new me featured mentors, which will be interesting to see if it drives any business to the mentor business. Um, and then I know Rhea's been doing a lot more swipe ups on Instagram, which is driving a good number, a good amount of traffic back to the site, which is good to see. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, one thing about swipe ups, uh, I took out like a, a screenshot of one magazine, uh, from, from, from here that yeah. they use those swipe ups, you know, that, that I thought was interesting. Uh -huh. So they have like a picture and then just a text and it looks like what we used to do on the front page. Uh, so with the image and then just a text, I thought that was pretty interesting to call attention and then just send, send people to a certain content that we have on the site. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you one example here that sure. we may use that, uh, for now on too. Like that format or whatever. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, send it through. You can we can send it to the social team. Um, but yeah, she's been doing that. It's it's working really well. I think it's sending like between five hundred and a couple thousand people per story or something like that. So um, awesome. she's, she's doing a few of them a day. Um, just and then she's p using those to put them into our highlight buckets um, for Instagram. What's still really interesting to me is the engagement rate on Facebook is just astronomically higher than any other platform. Even though the growth on 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 Instagram and LinkedIn is is very high, um, I'd be curious to know if other platforms are or if other businesses are similar to us, like where the engagement rate. But, yeah, the engagement means what? Like, like people adding like, comments. Yeah, adding comments, like it. You know, um, any sort of click on it, that type of thing. So mm. it's interesting because so, Facebook, we have almost no growth, but um, in terms of new followers. For new new likes on the page mm -hmm. uh, Instagram we're getting like a hundred new you know 50 to 100 new a day same with LinkedIn um, so those are growing much more but the actual engagement on Facebook is two times two to three times higher than the other platforms even, though, even for even if they're just likes for just likes I'm not positive um, yeah, I'm not positive. On just likes. Yeah, because just uh, likes, uh, they are pretty similar, uh, Instagram and Facebook. But uh, I don't know, maybe comments are different because I don't know, just the, the UI, I don't know. Or uh, are we doing something different uh, on Facebook and on uh, Instagram? Well, Instagram is a little more, Instagram is a little more meme heavy. Um, but we tend to push a lot of the stuff from Instagram to Facebook. And I saw that, Nan, I saw that the number of posts on Facebook jumped way up this past week, or from what I can see. Oh, no, wait, let me see. I was looking at this wrong. Um, but yeah, basically, um, it's one of those things where um, we're trying to leverage all of the content across different things. So like if we're posting stuff to Instagram, we should post it to LinkedIn and to Facebook. Even, even fin memes on LinkedIn may do well. <laughs> like, like we shouldn't just assume cause it's a professional thing. Like it could actually, yeah. Yeah. This little humorous change to the accounts where people, sure. you know, LinkedIn is very much like what Facebook was in 2012. So it's like, we shouldn't, you know, there's a ton of organic reach out there. Um, we shouldn't assume it's just, only for you know serious business content um mm -hmm. okay cool um but we'll keep an eye on that um youtube isabella stuff continues to do well it's embedded on um, um on those uh, high traffic pages isabella you were able to like embed stuff across for the higher view stuff right um, yeah, um, I embedded that on pretty much everything I could find um, yep. on like the top threads, some from us and some from other people. In terms of like higher view stuff, right? Yeah, I just found the ones that showed up with the most results or that like I noticed that we kept refreshing it. Like if it said, um, it kind of made it seem like you guys bumped it even a year after it was posted and more people were commenting on it. Yeah. So I, I put it at the top, um, the videos on there. Not at the very top, but you know, within the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, in terms of our, our YouTube, you know, we're, let's see, the last 30 days, we're up 21% on views, up 27% on watch time. Subscribers, we're basically flat. Um, but over the last 90 days, we're like up 185%, up 211%, you know, just because we're, we're basically starting to really scale this. It's still small numbers, though, um, compared to our other platforms. So I think, you know, it'll be interesting. We're releasing Monkey... To millions i just don't know the more i think about this the more i see like um 
the easiest way to probably scale this channel is to scale up what like the idea of what Isabella is doing. Because I mean, the difference between views and stacking things is pretty astronomical. So like our best videos for the pod and all that stuff, it's like 150 to 100 or maybe 200 um, views. Whereas when we embed these videos onto these threads that continually get traffic, you know, they just keep going up for basically forever. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if we should be putting in more resources. Isabel, I don't know if, if we could maybe have somebody helping you to, to put out more. Um, because I, I feel like if we were to able to increase the cadence with you, there's no reason why it wouldn't just continually build like brick. You know, you're basically right. When you, when you put out a video, it's not like, it's not like that video ever goes away because of the organic traffic. Like all it's doing is just, building up another 10 to 20 views a, a day forever, you know? Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's a, a multitude of things, me having to go through a couple different people being one of them. Um, of course, not in a bad way, but I know that everyone else is super busy, which is why I said, you know, if you need me to help with like the thumbnails on Canva, I'm like really familiar with using that. Yeah. And also, um, as far as if there's an intro and outro made, as soon as that's done, I know how to do that. I know how to edit the footage. Yep. Um, the only thing that I'm really having to go through others is also the social media whenever they can post it. But I've been kind of doing it where I don't wait if they can post it. I just, whenever they have time, if they think they have too much on there already, then I will, you know, have them post it. But I think that, um, you know, even the thumbnail, if there, if there needs to be any assistance with getting that done, I can do that just so that, um, you know, I don't feel like I'm, you know, pressuring anyone or keep following well, up with them if they're busy yeah i think you know there, nathan's had a, like five million thumbnails to do <laughs> in the last couple of weeks because he's getting the snippets now and so like i think that's getting ramped up but i think if we have a little bit of a, a backlog isabel i know you only have like what 10 to 20 hours a week right now yeah i've been i mean i've been trying to do less now after after we, our last conversation just so that i can um spread it out like doing the shorter videos and everything yeah do you um, feel like we could increase like shorter videos but increase the, the the cadence at all yeah i mean we definitely can i didn't know if you wanted to continue with once a week or do twice a week um you know because I, I know you had mentioned possibly doing that yeah i mean i think i don't see why we wouldn't do twice a week if if you can handle it and like i'm just trying to think like does the we have an editing team would would moving the editing help you the only problem is if you're doing that and it's like i know you're doing a ton of jump cuts um and you kind of know where you want to cut it it might just still be more efficient for you to do it um honestly i'm just cutting out a lot of like ums because i tend to do that a lot and yeah it's, so it's not really like i'm cutting out anything important i just keep saying um and it's really it doesn't sound good so i just get rid of that Okay. Um, also, and if I feel like I'm getting repetitive, um, because right. I don't want it to be too long. And that's why the last two videos have been shorter because yep. I, I did it in a different way. Um, and I actually did those two on Tuesday and Wednesday, which I plan to do two each week now, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that way I right. can build the backlog that you're talking about. But, um, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see if, if anyone else is able to edit it, but I don't know if it'll be the same way it's been but i like i said i'm getting mostly rid of just excess stuff that nobody really needs to hear about yeah i mean your last video was about 10 minutes i mean i think you could we could do eventually as you get down to like more niche topics that are just happen to be trending well in terms of traffic like i know we did those like first 20 topics right we kind of looked at yeah we still have some on that list so i can definitely yeah. burn through those and then the school one that i did i think it's either seven or eight minutes so it's even less Okay. Yeah. Like I, I think even three to five minutes um, eventually for like a lot of these would be sufficient. Like you just hit the the salient points, you go over the, the main points and then just kind of move on and maybe even do something where you have like three or four videos in or you set up, you have three or four videos, you know, you want to record and you have like bullet points and you literally just don't even hit stop on the camera. You just record three or four in a row. Like right. bullet points and you just go through and talk about each of these topics. And then you're able to kind of cut, 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 cut. And then all of a sudden you have four videos from like a one, like 20 minute recording session. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Because yeah, Honestly, the longest thing, like I said, is between the editing and the uploading. 
Um, I told you I kind of got the uploading situation figured out because yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really annoying. So that that was taking the longest time out of everything. So yeah, okay, cool. Well, yeah, I think I think that would help a lot um, because just looking at the embedding is definitely working. Like we're getting more, you know, more followers, more comments, more likes on on those videos versus like the the straight up podcasts, which are just thrown onto the um, onto the page. It'll be interesting to see what Monkey to Millions does. I don't know if it's going to do well because it doesn't have a natural place to embed it necessarily. Um, but it'll be it'll be interesting. That's coming out in about twelve days, so less than two weeks. So it's exciting. Um, okay, cool. And we can talk offline too, Isabella, a little bit more about that if it makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, anything else, guys? What am I forgetting? Design, new designs. I think we talked about or Jao talked about. They're coming. Yep. Soon. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just going to say about the meeting schedule through the LinkedIn outreach. Um, yes. Last week was a bit of an outlier. We had four in total over the course of the week. And then this week, uh, I think it's 23. Um, so we had, for this four, week. we had four. That's it. I thought we had more. Four from LinkedIn. I mean, there's other outreach I've been doing via Gmail and stuff um, yep. that brought more people in. So you had more than four meetings, but four from LinkedIn. And the number of pods that I was booked on as a guest. I mean, um, last week, I think, I think it was two, like the week before. Um, I've got this guy interested in having you on the pod, but he's kind of, I'm waiting to hear back from him. Yeah. Um, I think, I think we should do zero until we figure out like on the scorecard, we should just call it zero until it's like on the, it's on the calendar. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, cause who knows what will happen on some of these, uh, yeah, totally. talent oasis, Carolyn, anything there? Um, any updates? Um, I think we did place another candidate with with Cohere. Um, they're just checking references, which is a good news. Um, anything else uh, with that? Um, we've added another job last week. Um, so we've got that. And then we've got our first LinkedIn um, you know, catch-all kind of posting up as well. Um, so those have been added recently, and uh, it looks like we had heard back from, from Banneker that they're closing out their two that they had open, well, right. same positions, locations. Right. Um, so, you know, there's there's a little bit of movement there. Yeah, not, I mean, in terms of business dev, we talked about this um, last week, um, and so Carolyn's going to be putting a new job basically up every day from like targeted basically our target markets so like private equity in different cities and getting trying to find like the top candidates and then basically going out to potential people um each week um, or nathan's gonna be going out and taking those candidates and trying to trying to use um one or two or maybe three of them to to basically say hey here are some people who are interested in, in this type of role we recently ran a thing and then basically trying to um, see if they want more of those types of candidates to try and engage and build up this uh, the, the client base for Talent Oasis. Because right now it's just like we have a couple really good, like we have Cohere and we have a couple other good clients, but the, the base isn't growing as fast as I'd like it. So we're going to try that and see, see if that helps or, or works. Um, what else is going on? Uh, I think that's it. Anything else? Any questions? Thoughts? And micro content? No, I think it's coming fast. Yeah, <laughs> or it's going to be this week. And so the social team M micro content. Yeah, micro content, micro video snippets, um, short snippets from the pod, stuff like that. So um, Nan, if you can make sure Rhea sees that as it comes over, or once Nathan sends it, um, make sure they're those that team is is posting um, those there and and. Nathan already has the, the the thumbnails made and the videos are all up in those folders. So it's I, those... I got the first batch of five sent over. Um, all the thumbnails of those are done. And I'm gonna get the thumbnails for the rest of the snippets that have been produced so far done uh, probably tonight. Perfect. Okay. All right guys. Um, any other thoughts, questions? Anything? Nope. Nope. I'll okay. Be here. All right, man. Um, Strong push until the, the next set of holidays. <laughs> Just a couple of weeks away. All right, guys. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.